Greetings, friends and madams. I'm Strafic Zero, and we're playing Gundam Battle Operation 2. Man, I cannot get a break lately, so I am trying to recover from COVID. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't been able to play the game because I've been so unwell, but um, I think I got the weak strain, so I am actually almost completely better now. Hopefully things stay that way. So yeah, I had to get out of bed <laughs> to spin for the dag doll. I um I could have sworn I've I've looked this thing up a couple of times. It's from Moon Gundam. And I just it just fell out of my brain, but apparently it's the first native 700 cost support suit. And it looks pretty powerful, so you know me, I'll I'll spin for power. <laughs> All right, so yeah, I did did the whale thing, you know, and I guess that's okay because I did get a pay raise uh, for you know for the upcoming year. Oh yeah, uh, happy calendar change by the way. Yeah, so I guess I'm going to use my future funds to buy these Katarina bucks. Yeah, let's start off with this free ten spin. Yeah, so there's gonna be like a seven step like step up thing for to guarantee the Dag doll. I um, Probably should have just done the regular banner, but yeah. Okay, so we get the Zuda, level 2. I'm kind of surprised I don't have that yet. Another repeat of uh, Land Assault Gym. Oh, level 2 Special K. I already have level 1. A Gym Cannon. I really like this suit. This uh, kind of moves a bit slow in this game. Gun Cannon. Another Zuda. I think it's the same level. A ground gem, okay. A dom. There's a big fat plane. And we get the level 2 E3 DS. What's with all these really, really old mobile suits in the lottery here? Okay, and a very old Gundam. Okay, very well. Yeah, lots of handsome stuff in there. I, I guess the special K is fairly new. Everything else is pretty ancient. Yeah, I guess that's uh, that's pretty good for a free spin, right? Okay, this one's at 550. Mm, I think at this cost, I'd rather just be using things that are like native to 550. Okay, so we're going to do the Dagdoll step up. Um, well, I think you guys can sense like what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah, but at least the first step is half off. So let's go ahead and start this and see what falls out of these planes. Okay, Galgu JN. Yeah, literally nobody talked about this after it came out, so I, I guess I'll give it a try. Okay, we clean. We have ooh, a level two Rigazi. I already have a level one of this. All right, looking forward to using that. Another big clean. Rigizzi Custom. Okay, we got the whole damn family. Yeah, I've been needing another um, 600 general because uh, apparently my gap flea is just really awful and I can't really do well in it. Okay, prototype. Double barrel bean gun. Okay, a harpoon gun. For all those seals. <laughs> Don't shoot the seals, guys. Unless it's in self-defense. Those, those things are really mean. They're like wolves of the sea. Okay, uh, what the hell? Detector's beam rifle? I didn't expect to see that. Okay, well, we got three new suits, or two new suits. I already had a Rigazi. Um, this thing's only 500. It's got no melee resistance. It's gonna be fun. Okay, yeah, really looking forward to using this Rigazi custom. Um, <laughs> it's got like a giant beam AK. Okay, so. You guys know what happens to me during these super special step-ups, which, um, yeah, we're about to get a really big compilation of beam sabers and weapons that I can't use, so I'm going to do everyone a favor and just fast forward through this. Uh, <laughs> so I'm going to have to stare at beam sabers for an hour. Um, yeah. A lot of new weapons and some old weapons. Here's the third step. Zoga. That's weird. Okay, double Zetas, Saber, Zisa Saber, I get a lot of Zisa Sabers. Dryson's, Bazooka. Yeah, nothing super special here. 
Wish I had the full armor mark too, but don't have that. Okay, next step. Heat lance. Machine gun, really. Full armor seventh. Oh, Yune's gun. I wish I had Yune's Yagdoga, but I don't have it. <laughs> That'd be helpful. Okay, step five. Yeah, we're start we're supposed to start to get bonuses for four star mobile suits here, but uh, guess what? I don't I don't land any new four stars during <laughs> the middle steps. That's fun. Okay, I got the Gazelle Growl. Literally nobody talked about this after it came out. I, I guess everyone was just saving their tokens because uh, they were much smarter than I was. Yeah, I didn't spin for it. Okay, daggers, green picks, Palace of Thieves gun. Red Rider, okay, I'm going to be hurting a lot of people with that. I really hate fighting those. <laughs> okay, uh, pretty much only the Red Rider is new and significant. It's fine. Okay, step... Is this seven? No, this is step six. Wait, no, yeah, this is step seven. Okay, so we get another Akzaku machine gun. Why are there so many of these in the pool? What? A level four missile launcher? Are, you, are they serious? Why is that still in the loophole? Okay, long rifle for the Super Gundam. I cannot do well in that mobile suit no matter how hard I try. A Slave Wraith. Okay, didn't expect that. Another Rigazi. <laughs> if only I could have dropped this months ago. Okay, a prototype gun for the full Vernian. Oh, okay, a sniper rifle for the Galgoo Flipper. Okay, some sort of random beam saber, I don't know. Okay, another heat lance. I think it's the same level as before. And our big plane is... The guaranteed drought for the Dag Doll. Oh, I'm so surprised! Who would have guessed that I could have gotten a Dag Doll from the guaranteed step up? <laughs> this pose is so extra. He's it's seriously a support suit sitting there meditating. Like, okay, and the, and the cycle frame part. I didn't I didn't get this from the Sazabi because I didn't do the step up for that campaign. But yeah, apparently this thing's some sort of like new type god <laughs> or something. We'll, we'll see what happens. Huh. Okay, our 700 cost support's got pretty evenish stats, um, highly beam resistant, uh, space affinity. Looks like it's got pretty good mobility too. Okay, yeah, the, the stats really remind me of a, a general type. Okay, and I never got this cycle frame, like T thing before. Reduce funnel lock on. Reduce damage by three and increase turning by three. Oh, that sounds like it could be pretty useful. Yeah, these the slots distribution on the Dag Doll should let me stick that on pretty easily. Okay, um, there's the step up. Um, I got some pretty nice suits, but I don't think that was a great use of money. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty. So let me organize my horseshit here. Yeah, maybe I should have tried the the regular banner, but um, yeah, I didn't quite have enough tokens. I did have to buy them because I'm you know, a bad person. Okay, so let's look at the Dag Doll here. It um, to be honest, it doesn't really look like a mobile suit. It looks like one of those things from Eureka Seven. I, I forgot what they're called exactly, but yeah, they're pretty goofy looking. Um, they they did manage to model it pretty cool. Okay, so you have a beam rifle. 80% heat, 400 range. Uh, looks like it does focus. Hmm. The shape is a little weird. Okay, so it's got a beam saber, 2400 damage. Vulcans. Oh, it's got four Vulcan barrels, that's interesting. Okay, belly gun, 200 range on the belly gun, that's a bit weird. And it, and it overheats instantly. Okay, so it must be really close range. I think it's the same gun as the Zisa's belly gun. Okay, a shield gun. Okay, fires off four. It doesn't... It does have high heat, but uh, 400 range. The funnels have very short range. They overheat instantly. 250 meters, that's very short. That's like... That's like close range almost. 
Okay, a dag leader. Uh, 300 range overheats instantly. Generates a field. Okay, so this might be area denial, um, similar to the Zisa. Yeah, so weirdly enough, this thing has a lot of things from the Zisa's toolkit, so that's kind of funny. Okay, and the beam blade has a, its bayonet or something. Uh, yeah, I read on the the Dagdoll's wiki that this thing it's supposed the blade length is supposed to be 58 meters at max output. Um, just for context, the I think the Grandpa Gundam is 18 meters tall. So, yeah, that's a big-ass sword. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think they would put it like that in the game, but... Okay. Okay, let's look at weapons distribution. This thing, this thing has eight weapons, so... Yeah, I gotta do this very careful. Okay, I'm gonna put the shield on X, so I have um, access to instant stun. Uh, put the bayonet on circle just so I can do melee combos. Okay, I always stick my funnels onto circle and X. Leaders at the opposite end. The belly gun, we're gonna put at the bottom. Okay, Vulcan's top right. I'll probably use this the least. Okay, yeah, that looks pretty square. Man, I better commit all that to memory. Okay, let's look at the skill list. It's got High performance radar, high performance scope. You can see the radar while scoped. Okay, data link, personnel radar 2. Okay, space gimbal, high performance counter program for low HP, it's at 30%. The special counter won't occur when using funnels. That is very weird, but I guess we'll test that out later. Hmm. Can't use the special when the funnels are deployed. Okay. Saikamu Amplifier. Okay, this is a touchpad skill. Um, I, I think it just enhances its Saikamu weapons, but I'm not really sure what it does. Oh, you can only activate it once per spawn as well. That's, this thing's gonna be fairly limited, but we'll, we'll see what it does on the field. Okay, High Performance Balancer. This is very rare for a support. Okay, so, yeah, it's going to be able to make very good use of its double melee weapons. Okay, high spec and back level 2. That's kind of very rare for our support. Force Injector 2. Okay, it's got some good mobility skills. Enhanced Tackle level 5. Okay, the left arm has a buffer. I guess because it has a shield, but it doesn't really do any shielding. It just um, reduces damage by a percentage. Okay, let's throw some paint on this guy. Okay, um... It does look a little goofy, but they managed to model it in a way that's very handsome. Yeah, I really like the <laughs> the shield. Like, it's, it's very, uh... Yeah, it's pretty top-notch. Yeah, the, uh... This thing does look cool, but... I feel like the... The geometry, it just feels kind of random at all the parts. I don't know if they mesh well together. It's kind of like just like a bunch of random parts hobbled together, but I do like its proportions. But, but yeah, maybe we could have a more cohesive design for it, but anyway, let's go ahead and begin our field test. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to trying this thing out because the toolkit looks insanely powerful. It is the first support to have double melee weapons, and of course, that's the most broken layout in the game. Yeah, it's got pretty good turn speed. Keep in mind, I did put on that um, cycle frame, so I can turn a little bit faster than normal. Weapon cycle. Ooh, that gun's really fast. This one's a little slower. I guess you don't have to lead with the shield. Funnels are fast, leaders are fast. Wow, the balance on the bayonet does not make any sense. You should not be able to hold it that way, like, really easily. Okay, I'm just checking what can go prone. Um, I think what we're gonna find here is essentially you can go prone with nothing but the rifle. <laughs> so, yeah, a little goofy. Yeah, I guess this will be a, uh, less of an issue in space. Yeah, this thing does have space affinity. Okay, let's check out the melee moveset. It's got, yeah, standard 
EFF Beam Saber. Um, I don't know if the Bayonet moveset is exactly the same as the Zeta. I basically haven't used that thing in over a year. Okay, I'm just checking the balancer. Yeah, okay, it does have the same downswing as the Zeta's Bayonet. That's going to be a lot of reach and a lot of damage. Okay, I'm going to break off the shield from this GPO-1 before we start testing. Okay, so the beam rifle... Okay, instant stuns without charge. Okay, the shield can instant stun, it does not charge. Belly gun. Okay, very short range, it can instant stun, it's a bit of a spread weapon. Okay, very good melee damage. Okay, let's try out a down swing. 4650, that's very strong. Uh, okay, so the hitbox on the bayonet downswing is a little inconsistent. Yeah, so I only got one half of the hits. Okay, let's see if we can get thrust in the slash. Okay, so altogether 6800, that's very, very strong for essentially one attack with a wide sweep. Yeah, I imagine this thing is gonna hurt a lot of generals. Okay, the charge shot... Wait, what the fuck? Okay, so the charge shot does more damage. And it didn't pierce through to the MLRS back there, but it looks like it pierced through and hit the wall. So, apparently the charge shot does pierce. I, oh, I didn't notice until I was looking at this footage. I don't know why it deflected at a right angle like that, though. That's a little goofy. Okay, let's check out funnels. Huh. Okay, so that's more like a back formation. It overheats instantly. Holy crap, these do a lot of damage. 8k. Yeah, of course, they're gonna have to like sit still in there. Ah, okay, didn't quite do my cancel right. Yeah, this thing's gonna be very fun to combo with. Essentially, almost all of its range weapons instant stun, or they accumulate stun very fast. That, that's a triple stun right there. Yeah. Wow, like, Jesus Christ, that guy would have been melted. I didn't even need anyone else to stun for me. Yeah, I didn't even throw funnels in there either. Okay, let's check out the touchpad skill. Okay, so the funnels shoot twice. And the leaders... They do 12,000 damage now, just with one launch. Yeah, so it looks like the touchpad skill, it doesn't really have any effect on cooldown. But uh, basically when you launch your new type weapons, they do a lot more damage. And, you know, the skill only lasts for like 30 seconds or something, so... Um, it's gonna be hard to find any applications for this touchpad skill. Uh, Essentially, I, I think what you're really supposed to use it for is at the beginning of a match, you just pop this and yeah, you help your team gain a numbers advantage. You just kill people as fast as pop possible at the beginning. Like, just lay damage on people that your team is stunlocking and that should, you know, keep enemy numbers down and then that should give you numerical advantage at the start. Or at least some... Um, I guess you can do that whenever you spawn in. Okay. Yeah, so after the touchpad skill uh, wears out, you know, your Psychonal weapons are going to overheat for like a really long time. Ooh, wow. That, <laughs> that felt great. Yeah, this thing's uh, pretty awesome. Okay, so here's uh, one more thing I wanted to check. So I just wanted to kind of get a feel for the range on funnels. It's all—it's only 250 meters. Yeah, that's almost like Vulcan range, almost. Yeah, it's very short. So your uh, the operational range on Dagdoll, it's going to be like medium to close range. And you don't really have a lot of ranged weapons. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be able to snipe at all, so it's just your beam rifle and your shield gun have 400 range. Uh, of course, uh, the beam rifle should get a little more range when it's charged. But, uh, 
But yeah, this thing's gonna be fighting in close. Yeah, and I, I do wish the funnels had a bit more range to them, because uh, I kind of like to lead with them, but... But, but yeah, like, um, you have to be a little bit careful when you're using this suit. Okay, let's hop out here and have a look at the frame. The fuselage. Yeah, it's, it's always gonna look weird to me, but I will say the design is growing on me. I, I, <laughs> I do think it looks pretty cool. I like the proportions, and... Yeah, I like a lot of the individual parts, I just don't feel like they mesh together well. Yeah, it's like each part is a cool idea. Yeah, the <laughs> the tail the, the tail armor is freaking crazy. Yeah, look at all those thruster bells. Yeah, and then the freaking saucer on its backpack. Yeah, this thing's pretty uh pretty goofy but <laughs> pretty neat. Yeah, it, like it does remind me a lot of Eureka 7. Okay, let's take it out on a field test. And well, uh, yeah, we're we're gonna test on flat ground because of the other map, like just the unlevel stuff. It just doesn't really help with the bayonet. So yeah, I'm gonna test the the Saikamu amp combo here. Yeah, I'm gonna do, do this once per spawn. Down swing. Okay. Yeah, the, the triple down swing is a little hard to do. You have to get your timing really tight. Okay, the standard counter is the knee to hammer slam. A okay, pretty good hit. Okay, and at low HP, you got a special counter. Okay, okay a funnel counter. It looks the exact same as um, the Kubelis. Yeah, you get to see the funnels reconnect, that's pretty cool. Okay, so if you have your funnels deployed, yeah, it doesn't work. Yeah, I think you get the default counter if you're low HP but have the funnels deployed. Let's check out what this looks like if that happens. Yeah, so I'm at low HP and it gives me a regular counter if my funnels are out. Yeah, I don't know why they went through the trouble of coding it this way. I would have just left it at the special counter. And yeah, I guess, um, yeah, I'm a little miffed that they just gave us Kubli's special counter. They should have given us a new like, counter or something. Like, I think the Kubli counter should have been the default, and then the low HP special counter. It should have been, like, max output beam sword or something. That would have been awesome. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 58 meter, like, beam blade. But, uh, but yeah, I guess that would, um give all the general and rate types a lot of penis envy or something but but yeah um jesus christ guys yeah dag doll looks very strong um it's got a lot of stunning options a lot of mobility options uh it still doesn't have dodge roll or maneuver armor you know, that's okay um yeah almost every one of its weapons instant stuns and the fact that it has double melee is it's just crazy. Yeah, just everything about this thing is good. Um, I am a little worried about the slidey feet. Uh, they make positioning for double melee very difficult. But uh, but yeah, I guess you'll just have to practice with it. Yeah, I've um, yeah, this thing looks like it's gonna do a lot of damage, but uh, I am a little worried about its survivability because. Uh, yeah, it is going to be fighting a ton of, like, 700 cost stuff, and yeah, those things are really dangerous. But uh, anyway, guys, that's it for a look at the Dagdoll. It looks very strong. I'm really looking forward to using it, but um, hopefully you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.